do you know what I'm most passionate about? Physics, which sounds incredibly boring, but to me it's not. And it has a much broader context that allows me to really think about progressive technologies for health. I came into this world with quite a big awareness about the energetic nature of reality. Far back as I can remember, age four, five, six, I had this knowing that the field that we live within and are derived from was infinitely rich with energy and that we really didn't need to be ill and we should be able to heal all the illness. Unfortunately, I had very special people to me degenerate and have developed neurodegenerative diseases and die. I watched that process and I found it so frustrating because I really knew that this was unnecessary and yet I didn't realize how to help them. My childhood mentor developed Parkinson's and, and a rapid dementia and died. My grandfather developed a different neurodegenerative disease called at that point called oligopontocerebellar atrophy where he lost the ability to control his motor skills and uh, was confined to a hospital bed and died. And these were both really influential people in my life. I was committed to figuring out how to help them even after they died, like figuring out how to help people not experience what they experienced. Physics was something that I felt provided the answers and not all physics, but physics that really talks about the nature of our reality. How does mass emerge from the vacuum? What are these forces of electricity and magnetism, gravity, weak force, strong force? What are they? Where, where, how are they derived? How can we harness them? And how is the universe organized? And how, what is our place in the universal organization? And so I came upon the work of Ms. M. Harriman, 2015, 14, somewhere in there, 2014, and uh, really began diving into his work because he was the person out there in the world that I felt had been figuring things out and really had this global understanding about how quantum physics really is a seamless continuum with relativistic physics that of the, you know, the physics of the small stuff related to the physics of the big stuff and the rest of the physics community was not kind of connecting those two and didn't even see that it was possible or necessary. And what he discovered in, in very simplistic terms is that the universe is fractal in nature and that there are patterns in organization that occurs at the smallest scale in our kind of known physical universe, all the way up to universal scale. So there's patterns and then there's scalar relationships. So patterns that we see at the Planck scale, which is, uh, you know, Planck, let's say the size of a Planck to a human cell is the same as a human cell to the entire universe. So, so that's how small a Planck is. And so he described the relationship and organization of the Planck scale to the next jump of, let's say, the proton, which exists at, in the nucleus of all atoms. And he described how many Planck's are required to kind of create a proton. And then from the proton up the scale to, you know, all the way to kind of the formation of planets and galaxies in the universe. The universe organization is fractal in nature. And the energy at the smallest scale is incredibly potent, incredibly dense. And it translates up, losing slight, slight amounts with every transfer up to the different scales. Well, it turns out our bodies are comprised of the same patterns in organization. We are part and inseparably part of this, this one fabric of creation. And if we can figure out how to improve energy transfer into the human body, we can both transmute the dissonance that, that leads to disease and kind of entropy and breakdown, resolve disease, but also extend life. Um, you know, there's really no reason with proper energetics that we have to age. So not that I'm like against aging, but I'm against having to degenerate and suffer. So that's, I just want to kind of mark, mark my words here, you know, in, in, in front of everyone and say that I am committed to developing technologies that, that are based on this new understanding coming out of physics that will, will improve energy transfer into the human body and will resolve illness. This is something I want to devote a big part of my life to and know that that's part of the reason why I'm here. So anyway, I uh, had this beautiful opportunity to have Miss him here over the weekend. We, you know, he's a friend of mine. And how did he become a friend? Well, it's really interesting. I'd been studying his work for 
quite some time. And then I met Mark Hines, who is my life partner. And uh, turns out when I met Mark, he was he and Nassim were best friends. So he had been one of Nassim's earliest supporters. You know, I've funded a lot of his work. So I've gotten very close to Nassim over the years, and it's been a great gift because he's one of the finest minds on this planet. We hosted him here in Mill Valley and had a presentation for three hours, and then we all went down to LA because he's in the United States for the Nature of Reality lecture tour that he's doing. And then I had this profound experience of being able to sit down with a group of about 20 PhDs and physicists and scientists and engineers and doctors to to just really kind of talk more technically about what's coming and what we can create from this new understanding. And it's just, it's really a highlight experience. That's what I'm most passionate about. And it's not an abstract kind of intellectual passion. It's more of like, I need some tools in order to do what I came here to do. And I need this understanding in order to do it. Anyway, I just wanted to share all that with you because it's super important to me. Hopefully you'll see some really exciting things coming.